The former vice president appears to be reversing course on taking outside help from a private fundraising arm as a candidate. But on Thursday, his campaign said that as president, he would push to remove private money from our federal elections. Biden has raised significantly less money than some of his top opponents. CBS Evening News anchor Nora O'Donnell spoke with former Vice President Joe Biden about his place in the polls and his fundraising efforts. Let's talk about the state of the race, because it has tightened. Do you still consider yourself the front runner? I know I'm the front runner. Find me a national poll with the notable, a couple exceptions, the last four that have come out. But look, this is a marathon. Yes. This is a marathon. You can look at the last campaign finance uh, filing. We looked at that. You have less than $9 million in the bank. Bernie Sanders has 30, nearly $34 million in the bank. Senator Warren has $26 million. How do you compete against that? I just flat beat them. <laughs> We're on course to do extremely well. I'm not, I'm not worried about being able to fund this campaign. Mm -hmm. I really am not, truly. CBS News 2020 campaign reporter Bo Erickson joins me now from Columbia, South Carolina. Hi, Bo. So Senator Bernie Sanders seemed to criticize former Vice President Joe Biden Friday for appearing to change his position on super PACs. Let's listen to what he said. I don't have a super PAC. I don't want a super PAC. I don't need a super PAC. Because our campaign is funded, if you can believe this, to the tune of $16 a contribution. I do not think a super PAC is healthy for American democracy. All right? And I think, actually, if you check the record, Joe has said something similar. You know, when billionaires and wealthy people contribute, they're not doing it out of the goodness of their heart. They want something. And that is one of the great problems in American society. So to answer... But he is not the only candidate to push back on this issue, Bo. How do you think it will continue to play out on the campaign trail for Biden? Exactly. This has been a red meat reversal for some of Mr. Biden's uh, Democratic rivals here in the race. Senator Elizabeth Warren called it disappointing. And uh, former Congressman Better O'Rourke told our colleague uh, Tim Perry that this was a confusing message to Democratic rivals. But look, the fundraising for the Biden campaign, it's clearly not in the same place as Sanders, Buttigieg, or even Warren. The campaign actually sent an email today with the subject line to supporters, and they called it low on resources. So they're trying to get the eyeballs for their supporters to send money directly to them. This super PAC idea, it, it's been a lot talked about for ever since the 2016 race when Bernie Sanders came out against super PACs. Um, and now that Joe Biden appears to reverse course here, I think it's going to give some ammunition to some of his Democratic rivals. Uh, this has been a top of a conversation for the past few weeks when wealthy Biden backers have started mulling this idea. And at first, Joe Biden's campaign said, no, we do not support super PACs. We do not want any support of them. Um, but now it seems that they are a little more open to not being so vocally against the idea of having a super PAC. So interesting, Bo. So Biden unveiled a plan to bolster unions Friday. We know he's always been a big union guy. Can you tell us some more details of his specific plan? big union guy. He recognizes that there are 16 million union jobs in America, and that makes about 10 and a half percent of jobs here. So it's a wide swath of workers here in the country, but it's also like a big portion of the Democratic base as well. His plan today uh, goes along with what he says on the campaign trail, that we need to reward work, not wealth in America. And he says that unions built America, not the wealthy, not uh, Wall Street either. Some of the aspects of here are similar to what other Democratic say, Democrats in the race say. He pushes for a $15 minimum wage but, it, wage, but he also has several other interesting aspects as well. He wants to uh, codify the protections, uh, federal protections to unionize for farm workers and domestic workers as well. He also wants to try to protect those workers in the gig economy from being labeled independent contractors. He talks about this all the time on the trail and says that when 
when some industries label their workers as independent contractors, they are not awarded some of the benefits that Joe Biden thinks they deserve. And there's two other things I'll mention here. He wants to create a cabinet-level position, uh, a, a cabinet-level group, excuse me, um, that will work to try to push unions and m- maybe be an ally to unions uh, directly in the West Wing here if he's elected. And the other thing is that he says we need to empower the National Labor Relations Board because he says the Trump administration has gutted all their power and he wants a board that pushes union support throughout the country. And so, Bo, you're currently in South Carolina where a new poll shows Biden losing some support and others gaining. Is he still ahead in the state? What are you hearing from voters on the ground? Yes. Well, even though the poll showed some shifting between him and Elizabeth Warren, he, uh, voters tell me, his biggest backers here tell me that he's still very popular. It's important to note in that poll that he leads almost every group all across the state here. He leads with uh, older voters over 35, with uh, college-educated and non-college-educated Democrats. He even leads with men and women. An interesting uh kind of change that I saw in the poll is that in, in South Carolina, it is so key to lock in black voters here because they are such a large percentage of the group. Joe Biden leads that group with 38 percent. And then the second candidate, it's not Elizabeth Warren, it's Senator Kamala Harris. She is 17 percent. And so then uh, much below Joe Biden's, it is Elizabeth Warren's support at 12 percent with black voters. So I, I think when the Joe Biden campaign looks at a poll like this, they still still think they are pretty confident in the state. Right. Those are those are high numbers. Uh, And he does continue to lead in some national polls as well. Why does he remain so popular among voters? What do you think is his core appeal? So what we hear a lot on the trail is that voters know him. They think he understands them. And I think sometimes some of Mr. Biden's Democratic critics kind of downplay this idea, like, oh, are they really going to go caucus for someone if they just say they know him? But they do. And it's it's a more it's a human bond. They think he will fight for him. Um, I talked to a lot of voters all throughout the country, and they say this. And I spoke to two uh, this week in Iowa. It's Ann and Kevin McAhoon. And they used their example of their son's current brain cancer, of how they feel connected to Joe Biden. And we have that clip so we can hear from them directly. Our son, four years ago, Mm. pronounced with cancer. Had it not been for his stepfather and I, guess what? He'd have been in the streets living before they approved him for his disability. Mm -hmm. That's wrong. That's wrong. He's still fighting cancer. Still brain cancer. I'm sorry to hear that. Uh, Joe Biden's family has dealt with that, too. Exactly. Do you, does, does that think, do you think about that? I do think about that because uh, I, think, I think a lot about that um, because I know that he knows what the struggles are there. So, yeah, maybe I have a little bit more faith in Joe Biden on this. Really, you know, so powerful here we, stuff. He, yeah. Yeah, we hear the pain in her voice and we hear the connection directly to a man that she doesn't know on a personal level, but she feels like she knows him and that he will have her back. Joe Biden throughout the country constantly asks his voters here at his events to raise their hand if they've been affected with cancer. Almost everyone raises their hand. And so it, it kind of feels like sometimes their group therapy sessions, either for their personal lives or how they feel the country is going. So when they say that they think that Joe Biden knows them, I think this is what they mean. All right. Well, Bo Erickson in Columbia, South Carolina, on the trail. Thank you so much. Thank you, Tana. And you can see more of Nora O'Donnell's interview with Joe Biden Sunday at 7.30 p.m. Eastern on 60 Minutes.